Ahoy, matey, you've landed in the right place! Hello and welcome! This tutorial is produced by PhotoshopIsland.com, your source for fun and practical Photoshop extras, from brushes to complete layer designs. Welcome to the Advanced Distressed Paper Volume 1 tutorial. And uh, just give you a little start out here. This is how we're going to end up when we're done. Okay, so let's jump into this Advanced Distressed Grindhouse tutorial. So I'm going to start with a poster that I've already designed. And let me bring up the layers here so that you can see what I've got. Uh, this was all built in Photoshop. Everything's here, all the layers. Got a smart object here as well. Now, um, basically, I'm not going to show you how to design this poster, but I will show you how to rough it up, give it a nice grindhouse look. So what we want to do first is let's select our brush tool and let's uh, load the grindhouse brushes. Which I have ready right here and you'll see when they load you might when you first load them you might want to hover your mouse over some of these and you can see the names of the uh, various brushes that will give you an idea of what you're going to get if you use these brushes and the first thing that we want to use is the rough edge rectangle mask so that we can mask the outside edges of our poster so I'm going to select that and I'm going to go to my background layer and create a mask. And now I've got that brush selected, but it's much larger than it needs to be. So I'm going to use my left bracket key to shrink the brush down so that it fits within my workspace. And that looks like it's about right, set to about a thousand pixels. And I have found that the easiest way to do this is sort of do it backwards and then switch it back. So I'm going to stamp down once inside of my mask. Now that's the exact opposite of what we want. So you can either use the Command or Control I key, or if you want to go to Images, Adjustments, Invert, that will invert our mask. So now you can see we have a nice uh, inverted mask. And uh, just to help see what we're working on, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to put this at the bottom. Move this down one. And let's fill that for now. Let's just fill that with white so that we can see that our poster does have some interesting uh, cutout borders and things now, as you can see around the sides. So that's pretty easy. Uh, then the next step is let's put some edges on that. So let's go back to our brush tool. We're going to select uh, the second brush over, which is a edge that matches the mask that we just laid on. So I'm going to click that. Now, I know that I want that to be set to 1,000 because that's what we use the mask size at. And you do want to match those sizes so that they match up when you lay them down. Now, I'm going to jump all the way up here to the top layer, and I'm going to create a new layer because I want to work with these uh, additional grindhouse grunge effects on separate layers. And we'll call this one Edge. And that'll give us a little bit of flexibility in case we don't like how light or dark they are. Now, I want this edge to either be lighter or darker than the current edge of my poster. So I think I'm going to make it lighter. So I'm going to use the sample tool. I'm going to sample my edge color. Double click on my color picker. And I'm going to pick a little bit lighter color. So now I have a lighter color than the edge selected. Go back to my brush. I still have that edge brush selected. Just going to line that up with the edges of the mask that we laid down. I'm just going to stamp down once. And let me zoom in just a little bit so you can kind of see what you're getting here. You can see now that we have this little bit lighter rough edge to our poster, which is a nice good start to our grindhouse grunge effect. Next thing is let's add some rough tape to the edges of this. So I'm going to pick um, a old tape edge wide. And um, again, this is much too big for the resolution that I'm working at. So I'm going to use my bracket key. We'll bring it down. And um, I don't know. Let's, let's say I want uh, this left edge to look like it's got some tape on it. The tape usually discolors, so I'm going to pick kind of a dirty yellow color. This may be too dark, but I'm going to add a new layer. 
and we'll call this tape. And um, I've got my new layer here. And I don't know, let's make it a little bit bigger than that. So again, the bracket keys. And uh, I'm just gonna stamp down once. I've got this on a new layer. So if I don't like it, I can change it. Um, again, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see now. Now we've got this tape along this one edge. Now, uh, you can go in and use some other advanced tools uh, or some advanced adjustments on the brush, and we'll jump into that. Let's, let's try to uh, do something else to this. How about a, how about a roughed up corner? We've got some roughed up corners in here. Uh, this is a roughed up corner marks number two. And again, it's a little bit too big. So I'm using my left bracket key to reduce it. Now let's say um, I want this roughed up corner to be in the lower left, but it's oriented right now to the upper left. So what I want to do is go to my uh, brush panel over here and right at the top you can select your brush tip shapes. I'm going to rotate that so that, let's see, we need to rotate that 90 degrees to get it to the lower left. And uh, I'm going to close this back up and get it out of the way. Let's create a new layer again and we'll call this left edge and back to our brush. It's a little bit too big still. Something around there. And again, you can enter, you could enter a more precise size. Let's say I wanted it to be 650. This rough edge, I think I want it to be kind of a discolored brown. So I'm going to go back to my picker, pick a kind of a dirty brown color, drop that right on the edge. Now you can see you're getting kind of an interesting look. And the great thing is we've done these all in different layers. So if you do it that way, you could change the blend mode to um, multiply. If you wanted to kind of look more blended in and darkened in, you could use overlay to create a, a lot softer effect. Kind of like the way that multiply looked there. There's a lot more you can do with this. You could drop some folds in, rough up the corners some more. Here's some organic drops. Look like some kind of stains. Um, make a new layer, call them water, and um, we'll keep that dark brown for this, and I'll throw some of that uh, down here in the lower area, kind of muck it up a little bit down there, and let, let's pick multiply with that. Now, also you can use, of course, the um, standard distressed paper brushes to work with this, so I'm going to go back to my brushes and I'm going to load the uh, standard general set here because I want to add some folds. I've got some folded paper in here. Um, let's pick uh, the distressed folded hard. And um, again, I want this to be on a new layer. We'll call this folds. And I'm going to make my folds a light, very light discolored yellow based on the background of the poster. It's much too big here, so let's bring it down. Now this may not fit exactly, but we can use our mask from earlier if it doesn't. This looks like it's going to be a little, a little bit too big, but I'm going to go, I'll show you how to mask that to, to match our poster. So again, I'm just going to click down once. I've got my rough folds in there. Now the folds ran over the edges, so a quick way to fix that is to go down here to the mask that we created for our background and uh, use the uh, command or control click. That selects our mask, and we want to apply that mask to our folds above. So uh, now that we have it selected, we just want to click Add Layer Mask, and it automatically adds it to it. And you can see, you go down, Take the background off, it might be a little bit hard to see. Don't forget to check out PhotoshopIsland.com for a bonanza of fun and practical Photoshop extras, from brushes to complete layered designs.